I'm Ashton Addison, and today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Edison Chen, co-founder and CEO of Kudis. Edison, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Ashton, for having me here, and uh, glad to be here together with the Crypto Coin Show. And I would love to talk more about Kudis, and I would love to share more with you as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super fascinated for this discussion on D-PIN, wearables. Uh, I feel like anything you can wear that integrates blockchain and, and decentralization is something that I would put on immediately. I, I would love to, to show that off. And I'm super excited that uh, physical infrastructure networks are diving into wearables and not just you know routers or other sort of smart devices that, that are cool, but you can't really show it off you know, as you're walking around town. Yeah. Uh, so I'm super excited for this discussion, and I'm, I'm super fascinated to know how this came about. Uh, but I would love to start a little bit, Edison, with your background in relation to this uh, and how you got involved in starting Kudis. Sure. So uh, back to college that uh, I was always want to be an entrepreneur. And uh, so I started my first startup uh, since 2015, and I uh, sold the company in 2016, and then uh, get a chance to uh, read about the uh, Bitcoin white paper and then start buying the Bitcoin together with some of my friends in the Silicon Valley. And, uh, you know, there's uh, most like the engineers uh, graduated from UCLA, UC Berkeley, and then uh, we start invest together into the Bitcoin and later the Ethereum and other like early uh, startups. And uh, since like uh, 2017 to 20. Uh, 21. We most of our focus on the uh, crypto, uh, like uh, investment and also trading. And uh, but uh, during that moment, 2019, uh, we also find out the uh, consumer uh, technology is also a huge market. Uh, but we don't know yet uh, how we can do something together with the consumer product and also the crypto. So uh, and. Uh, until the 2022 end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, uh, uh, we read something about the uh, deep in from uh, some of the uh, research uh, company like Masari, and uh, we know that okay, there's some actually some people out there are doing something, uh, combining the uh, physical product uh, hardware together with the crypto, and that's uh, actually fascinating us that at the moment. So we're thinking we want to bring people some uh easier to understand uh product and also lower barrier for everybody to uh use and also easier for them to enjoy the use of it uh like i said that uh, uh we are into space a little bit earlier than most of the people uh i think uh like bitcoin is really easy for everybody to understand it's helping you to move your money around the world and uh, with very low cost and uh, uh, that's also one of our incentive to creating some product that easier for everybody to understand. Uh, that's why, and also we uh, am personally really into the wellness and uh, uh, doing a lot of sports. Uh, that's also that uh, one thing I learned the most from my college UCLA, you know, sports is a, a big thing for everybody's life. Uh, keep you healthy and also uh, help you to creating a strong body to, uh, you know, to face all the challenge in, the, in your life. Uh, so uh, around the 2023, like uh, uh, second half, we start building the cutest project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's very interesting. And I've actually had the experts from Masari that are focused on D-PIN on the show before to discuss all of the use cases. And wearables wow. is, is one of those sort of future use cases that was sort of down the road. I think people are looking at hardware for IoT, smart devices, you know, routers or um, even automated cars, uh, but wearables and and consumer products, I feel like are something that is obviously a huge market. Everybody in the world uh, that has a body could uh, could wear. Um, and and you know, we haven't really got into the specifics, so I would love for you to break it down uh, as simple as possible on you know what exactly is Kudis. What does you know wearable D pin mean for somebody that doesn't really understand blockchain? But they they want to know what is this product and how does the blockchain part benefit me? Mm -hmm, for sure. So uh, I think uh, you already know a little bit more about the DPIN than others. Uh, but for us, uh, uh, DPIN actually lead us to into these uh, projects. Uh, but when we build up the product, uh, we are we we start feeling like uh, if you talk to most of the people about DPIN, is another. 
a uh, question need to answer and uh, to getting people to understand, okay, what actually is DP and then what actually you are building, right? But when we have the ring, we just show to the people, okay, so these are like crypto consumer product. You can you can wear it and the use the app, you can start earning. Uh, that's actually easier than telling people what is DP. So mm -hmm. uh, starting from that, uh, we are thinking uh, for most of the consumer, they don't really care that much about what is a fundamental technology underlying the uh, the product or say a, a project or service they we provide them uh they they're thinking or they care more about like uh, what problem can you help me to solve right mm -hmm. so they are thinking that we do want to devote ourselves for more than like 10 years into the industry to creating project then we need to actually helping people to solve some of their like real world problem uh, so like I said before that uh, I'm really into the wellness and uh, I'm using a lot of different wearable products from the web too, like Aura, mm -hmm. like uh, like Apple Watch and uh, Fitbit, all these things. Uh, but I found out that uh, during the past years uh, that we are using the, the wearables that uh, we actually have no control of our data. And uh, and also the data has no access to each other's like uh, uh, like uh, applications and also uh, I think uh, or data and also been uh, you know secretly sell to other uh, third parties and also companies. Uh, so I think uh, uh, the mm, fundamental concept about the uh, blockchain and crypto is that allow the user to own their own money and asset. Uh, I think data is also an asset, really, really important, especially in yeah. this uh, age, right? So like uh, mm, Amazon and uh, uh, eBay has all like uh, uh, shopping data and uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram have all, all social data. And uh, all this data was controlled by all these companies. And uh, so we think that in the future, uh, users should control their own data. Uh, especially the health data. Health data is one of the mm -hmm. most important thing about us, right? Think about it mm -hmm. that uh, now we are actually running into the AI age. So what's the most important things for those AI? Knowledge and data, right? Uh, but if you don't own your own data, that I think that uh, we, we we might be confused in the future that uh, uh, where is our data and uh, how our data being used by the all the AI companies and all the other services. Mm -hmm. So that's also the one thing uh, we think about uh, when we build a new product, we should definitely guarantee our user to have the ownership of their data. So the mm -hmm. cutest ring is, so cutest is about like three parts. So first is the ring, uh, like uh, uh, I have one here to show you as well. So uh, this is a ring that we are building. Uh, you can see the sensor and also the uh, battery inside and uh, this part, uh, is the ceramic, it can rotate, and uh, the whole body is ma made by the titanium. Uh, we actually want to build some product easy for everybody to understand and also uh, can uh, fit into their uh, lifestyle, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of the uh, wearables in the web too. They are more focused on the uh, clean look and the sport, and uh, Aura is like sleep tracker, Oop is like a performance tracker. So we want to build something different. And also people can recognize, oh, this security screen, uh, you know a little bit more about uh, uh, more than the wellness. And also you might need more, a little more about the crypto. Uh, and also a lot of users telling us the uh, security screen has helped them as a icebreaker in a lot of offline events. Mm -hmm. And the second thing we are building is the uh, QDS app. So in the app that uh, people can uh, uh, pair with the ring and uh, sync up their uh, uh, their data uh, from the ring. And so data will be uh, uh, stored at the ring ends for uh, seven up to seven days. So like you can see this the uh, app, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we have built, uh, uh, so we can help people track their sleep and the uh, steps, calorie burns, and also the heart rate, uh, yeah, show up like, uh, my last heart rate was like a one, 109. And uh, this is the AI coach we are building. Uh, so you can actually talk to the AI coach with any of your questions related to your, uh, you know, a daily problem in your life about wellness, you want to eat and uh, uh, what you uh, want to do when you want to lose some weight or gain some weight. Or if you don't know what to do when you want to do some like uh, uh, chat uh, session, then you can ask it as well. So we work with a lot of the 
world class talented to uh, build on the uh, AI coach. So we are using the chat GPT for all uh, at this uh, stage uh, to allow people to get in, uh, you know, tap into uh, a really powerful uh, large language model. And but, uh, uh, you know, when people use it, uh, they like I said, uh, they won't feel all oh, this complicated. We want people to have like very simple street and fun uh, experience. And also we have a sales uh, uh, point system. So as uh, you can see that uh, for the point system, there's a couple of the activities that uh, people can achieve uh, every day. So we are uh, expanding more features inside. Uh, from Starting from next week or next next week, we will uh, launch a new uh, sports mode features. Then users can uh, actually monitor their performance during their uh, activities. Um, so that's actually the uh, the the second things we are building. The third thing is the website. So on the website uh, is actually where the most of the uh, the on chain activity happen. You buy the ring uh, uh, by paying the Solana, and now we uh, supporting the uh, Stripe payment. So you can use a fiat credit card and other uh, of, uh, you know way you, if you want to make purchase the cutest ring. At the same time, we have a leaderboard. Uh, people can check out the 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 points they earn. Uh, if they invite people, they earn points. They purchase the ring, earn points. They using the application in the rings, they also earn points. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the future, we will also uh, tap into more uh, uh, blockchain related products uh, like uh, SocialFi, GameFi features uh, to build within the the QDS ecosystem. Yeah. Wow, very cool, Edison. And you covered a lot there. Uh, the ring itself looks really nice. Um, and and the app looks great as well. And you know, before that, we also spoke about the the ownership of the data, which I feel is very important. You know, a lot of people they sort of take for granted the importance of their own personal health data, and they think, well, you know, I'm getting the the Fitbit one, and it's it's a small company. But then all of a sudden, Google buys that, and now they conglomerate that information with the other yeah. search information and all of the information exactly. that they have. And sure. you know, it's uh, once somebody takes over that company that's uh, a, a tech giant, all of a sudden it's moved into the wrong hands. You know, at any whatever the price of <laughs> the founders of, of Fitbit uh, have. So with that issue, is that able to be prevented using this decentralized network or storing the data? Uh, in a more secure way so that, you know, Google or whoever can't come along and, and buy that information? Uh, yeah, I would say, um, so in the in the past two decades, I think uh, there's a lot of things changing in the Silicon Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. So it used to be like everybody uh, chasing for or say admiring the open model that everybody is can free use a lot of the different technology. And then uh, it becoming like a closing model in these two decades and because closing model make more money. Uh, but we thinking that uh, uh, once blockchain technology becoming the mainstream uh, is actually gave people the option and the choices to decide it, uh, which one, which way I want to go, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. if it's uh, highly centralized and it's really effective and efficient. Uh, but also we lose a lot of the, like ownership and also the rights because we are changing something, right? We're changing the or rise of or data or money to the efficiency and the effectiveness. Uh, but I think there's always a balance point that we can find out in the future. So mm -hmm. let's say once people can uh, uh, can have the ownership of their data, they can control the access to their data. Uh, even the Google Com, uh, they need to pay for use users' data, and uh, what the most important thing is that the Google don't pay us, uh, so mm -hmm. they pay for the user directly. Mm -hmm. And the uh, mm -hmm. Orbis model is we have the some like um, you know take away from the uh, all the trace. Mm -hmm. uh and also the transaction happening. It's kind of like a app store business model. Uh so we we get we we are trying to uh, uh nurturing or use it and also get them to know that data worth something, right? They they know mm -hmm. it worth, but they never getting any price before, right? Like yeah. uh, we receive the spam call every day, right? So let's say I have asked before, right? 
like uh, every time my uh, phone number got sell, like just like pay me as a very, very uh, usual user than like one dollar, uh, like a time sometimes like uh, less than that, maybe 50 cents. Uh, so so like if I receive like 20 spam calls, then I know that my number had been sold for like $5 or say $10. So um, at the same time that if the uh, all the, uh, the demand of the data uh, company starting pay for users data and user can actually receive money, then I think everybody will realize, okay, uh, all this data actually worth something. So we actually need to protect our data. I have read about a paper uh, like a couple, I think a uh, couple of years ago. Uh, I can't remember exact the date, but it, it told er, told user that you can actually ask the company to uh, uh, take uh, take up the your data from their shelf, mm -hmm. like a uh, virtual shelf. But it need you to go through a lot of files and uh, take a lot a lot long time, like a couple mm -hmm. months. Nobody can do that, right? Uh, is because uh, so, we don't know like how much it works. So we, we definitely don't want to do that. Actually, or, or data privacy uh, provided, uh, like protected by law, but uh, uh, we have uh, no access to actually fail uh, or say complain about it. Mm -hmm. So I think once the decentralized uh, network can be built up and everybody can own their data, then uh, all the business can kind of change in a whole different way. So if you need anybody's data, okay, pay for them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can provide sort of the platform or the services, then you can also benefit from it. But it's definitely not like, uh, okay, uh, I can get any access to user data through our product, then we start selling all the data, then that's bad, right? Because mm -hmm. you are doing something behind the user. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the, the things that we actually want to change in the future, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great way of going about it. Having the choice, if I'm collecting my health data through the ring and I see that, hey, you know, this large company wants to buy it for this amount of money, it's my choice. I might say, hey, that's worth it for me. I'll sell them my health data. But if I don't want to, you know, they can only, they can't just buy the whole company and sort of take my data without my permission. So I, I like exactly. that approach. Exactly. Exactly. And I totally agree. And, and now, on, um, I know you talked about the ease of use and also buying the, the ring. You don't need to even know about crypto. You can use your credit card, which is great, I believe. Um, but I'm personally interested, and I know the crypto people are interested in, in the crypto side of it. You mentioned that you're also able to pay with Solana for the ring. That's very cool. Um, is there a, a, a reason... Uh, behind Solana as the chain, you know that it that it works well, or you know the the rationale behind which blockchain te technology is there to bring utility to the ring. Yeah, definitely. I think the the biggest or the largest utility the Solana can bring to the ring is the Solana's community. You know, the Solana community have been really active and also supportive. So uh, we start launching our product uh, back to the. Uh, March in the uh, Solana Hacker House in New York, mm -hmm. and we save a lot of the uh, support and traffic from the uh, builders, developers, and uh, uh, mem uh, like community members from the Solana ecosystem. And uh, we feel like that uh, if we choose to build on some uh, uh, layer one project, then the most important thing is look at the uh, community, right? So I have been asking this question for quite a lot of times. So I point out like three uh, things is very important when choose a ecosystem. So first is the people. You want to look at the community. You want to look at the other uh, project founders, uh, what they do like daily, usually on Twitter, offline. You know, I find them like all hardworking. You know, we are uh, just like two years startup and uh, we are still early. But we find out a lot of the large project founders, they are like flying around and uh, uh, talking to people, uh, introducing the project and the services. So I think that's one thing really important. If you, you know, uh, can work uh, in the ecosystem together with all these hardworking people, it's very, very easy for us to getting people to know about us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
second thing is the price. So we start building like last year. Uh, like Solana was not like hype at that at like this moment. So uh, I think uh, uh, if the price is low and still a lot of uh, projects going on and uh, still uh, the whole ecosystem like the starting from the Anatoly and those Raj that are like building uh, uh, really, really uh, focus on the whole ecosystem. Then I, we know that we are choose the right one. And mm -hmm. I think third thing is the product. Uh, so the all the product and the services in the Solana, um, I think a, a lot of them like the consumer orientation and the consumer cin uh, uh, center. So uh, that's very important because with all these allies and also partners, uh, we uh, we we will have a lot of synergy. So we can actually uh, onboard a lot of the consumers, even they don't know something about the crypto. Uh, they can be easy easily onboard to our project. So and uh, let alone the uh, the builders behind the Solana, they are uh, really hardworking on uh, building the capacity and also the functionality on the uh, on the Solana. You know. And recently launched the blinks and also uh shout out to all these builders uh behind that and also there's a lot of things going on. So uh that's actually the uh couple of reasons why we choose Lana when we start the project. Yeah. Appreciate that information, Edison. And uh, even in you know the the market volatility that's happened this week, uh, the the August. Uh, crypto crash, they may call it. Solana has been strong and it continues to be strong. And I feel like uh, institutional investors even might start being more interested in the chain as it looks like that may be the next asset in line for an ETF. Uh, and, exactly. and, you know, after Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana seems like the next logical step. So I feel like uh, you guys might be one step ahead of the game. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Um, and, you know, I, I really like this wearable ring as a, as a blockchain product that sort of like secretly puts blockchain in the hands of people who don't know about crypto, but then they realize the yeah. potential that it has and literally in their hands. Um, but I feel like you need a, a, a great go-to-market strategy as well because you're competing with some of the biggest companies in the world. You know, if this is going to compete with Apple Watch or, or Fitbit, uh, and the Aura Ring as well, I know, is getting popular. Um, it's it's more than just having blockchain as a competitive advantage. You need to have a huge strategy around uh, adoption. So is there a strategy for commercial partners or you know, celebrity athletes? Or how can you guys get this into the hands of more people and bring the awareness outside of Web3? So I have to, for this part, uh, we have to shout out to the community members uh, from the Solana ecosystem for sure, because uh, they are all the early adopter for the cutest ring and they are being super supportive. And, uh, you know, the ring and the app is at the beta version and they have been really inclusive and uh, gave us like a really active feedbacks. And uh, so uh, I will say that's something you, you won't have in the, uh, general consumer market. Once the product out, if it's bad or if there's problem, then people will like uh, shutting out for. Uh, I need this, I need that, and I want uh, uh, a refund as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the crypto space, I think uh, everybody actually uh, have uh, one uh, common mindset that if we want to, uh, uh, I would say make more money or say building something great, we have to support something has the potential, right? I think people find the uh, QDIS has the potential to becoming a, uh, a great project in the future. So everybody is showing the love and support. And uh, I think uh, at the first beginning, we really have a, a comprehensive uh, marketing strategy uh, for bringing the, mar uh, for bring the QDIS range to the market. Uh, you're right. Uh, we are competing with all these like uh, at least billion uh, billion dollars company, some even like a trillion dollar company, right? Yeah. So we have to find out like uh, some points that people might be interested in. And also we need to have like clear positioning of our brand. So we won't compare directly with the Apple Watch. Uh, we, we will starting from like uh, seeing the 
like Aura and Oob as our first competitors. So we 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 study on them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are trying to uh, understand more about what the market might need, what the user might need, right? So uh, as you can see uh, from the small uh, product feature, like uh, make the ceramic part can be rotated uh, to the application uh, design. And also for the uh, point system we bring to the users, we all put different like thought and the idea into that. Uh, so each small details make the big difference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of user, uh, uh, they, when they have the ring, they come ask me about, uh, do you guys design the uh, the fidget features uh, like uh, on purpose or say like intentionally? Uh, we said actually, yes. Uh, like a lot of our team member like uh, introvert. So I'm also introvert. So we know that uh, how people feel when they in the public or during the meeting or uh, like panel, keynote, speech, uh, we're nervous sometimes, right? We want to do something like uh, people won't be noticed. So mm -hmm. like uh, just uh, spin the rain could be one thing to help us to reduce the the, the nervous, right? So mm -hmm. that's all just uh, small details and features, getting people to obsessive with using the cutest ring. And uh, at the same time that uh, uh, cutest position as a, uh, a product to lower the barrier of uh, better quality life and also mm -hmm. leading people to the wellness lifestyle. Uh, that's also one of the reasons why we built the AI coach. We found out that AI can be really powerful if you use it in a right way. So that's also, you know, a personal coach could be cost you more than 3,000, 5,000 or more than like $10,000 a month, right? Uh, but with the AI coach that uh, uh, they have all the knowledge and they can give us a lot of the different devices when we need it. Uh, maybe we we do need a personal coach in the future, but at the beginning, we want people to know more, have more knowledge uh, with lower cost. So mm -hmm. uh, that's also one thing we find that we can be competitive and uh, have some competitive advantage compared to others. And also no monthly subscription fee is also one thing important. And uh, data ownership also people care, a lot of user uh, do care about. So, you know, mm, there's always one thing we uh, keep into the team, uh, like the whole company uh, to uh, face the, uh, the fact that we are a startup. So at the first time, at the first stage, we should serve a small group of people and mm -hmm. serve them, uh, uh, in a good way. And then it, once we grow larger and have more uh, uh, like a capability or say energy uh, and also funding, then we scale to more people. So small company do small things first. And then when we go uh, becoming larger, you do uh, you know large things as well. So yeah. that's actually, you know, uh, something about the uh, strategically, uh, uh, how we think about to grow our business as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, great explanation, Edison. And I do like the design a lot and, you know, the, the, the spinner and it looks very sleek and, you know, I've seen some of the other rings and, and honestly, they're a bit bulky and sort of plasticky looking. So I think you guys have a one up on that. Um, I I'm going to go to the site and check it out. So, in that case, if I go to the site, I'm able to uh, order it right now, or you know, what what are the continued growth for the launch? Yeah, so we are currently in the stage two uh, selling. So you can go to the cutest.xyz, c u d i s dot x y z, uh, to uh, find out our ring and uh, buy the ring at the second stage, and we will uh, uh, we are keep shipping the a ring for the stage one user and also we'll start shipping to the stage two users soon. Um, and also we are uh, actively uh, hard, uh, uh, putting a lot of efforts on expanding or uh, uh, the cap uh, capacity of our supplier, uh, supply chains and to try to uh, manufacture more rings enhanced. And then uh, I think uh, starting from October that we will have a uh, a lot of more product in stock, then we can, uh, at that moment, uh, when people buy the ring online, they can uh, get a ring in the next seven to 14 days, depends on mm -hmm. uh, which country they are uh, located. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, that sounds great. It's a it's a good problem to have. Uh, there's a lot of demand, and it's, it's, I feel like a lot of crypto people to start out they want to support uh, products like this, as you said, more of a startup, uh, and and um, this is something that I know uh, like cypherpunks and just uh, technical people they they they're more conscious of their own data, um, not to mention having a, a great product that's physically. Uh, strong and looks good, uh, but the importance of you know your most personal sensitive data not being in the hands of somebody that you don't know, or if it does happen, you actually get to get paid for it. So I love what you and your team are doing. Uh, I'm going to check out the, the the site and and order a stage two, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it expands. I'm sure there'll be you know maybe different designs further in the it's AI brilliant. part, um, other advancements coming up as well. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ashton. Yeah, thank you so much, Edison.